Hey YouTube, this is Farwas23 and I'm here to welcome you to a brand new project. I am a huge fan of the 1996-97 Beast Wars series from Transformers. And I watched these as a kid. I I love these. The, this was my like my teenage years. I was like 14, 15 at the time when this premiered. I, I love this stuff. It was like just when CGI was really coming into children's cartoons, it was awesome. And it actually, it actually really holds up. It, uh, there's a couple of narrative hiccups, but otherwise it actually really holds up really, really well. What I have never done in my entire life is watch this. I have never seen the original Transformers series. I vaguely remember, like, one scene from one episode. I vaguely remember that, but I don't know the show. It was I was a little too young for this. It was, yeah, 84, the Great, the, uh, the Great War of 1984 that um, I would have been two. So I was I was simply too young to cognitively really understand what was going on. So I have here the Shop Factory DVD of the first season of Transformers, and I'm going to do a vlog review of every episode of this series. So um, without further ado, here we go. I'm going to watch More Than Meets the Eye, part one. Okay, um, not the most terrible thing in the world I've ever seen. I'll admit that. Um, my gut reaction, like a out of ten, like a seven. <laughs> That's kind of where I am, but I'm going to talk about some interesting points. I made notes as I was watching it. Okay, so what we got here. Um, like, I did appreciate, although it's kind of... It's kind of a narrative shorthand. The the intro, the kind of like the robotic intro, like for you know this is planet called Cybertron and there is Autobots and Decepticons. Like okay, you're just establishing it. Like okay, we're just we have to kind of get this exposition out. This was probably one of the this was a, one of the first attempts at really children's programming. This is probably just the easiest way to get the information. Just give it. You know, there's there's gonna be no Josh Whedon esque stuff going on here. Just go with it. Um, I like the idea that the Autobots kind of come across as like a freedom force. I, I thought that was a really, really interesting idea. I thought I, I like that whole, as opposed to, I was, I was almost under the impression there was almost like an even level in the groups, but no, it's almost like the Autobots really are not that a huge level group. And there's this huge thing in Decepticons, really. I, I like that. I didn't, I didn't think that was part of the narrative. Um, all the tech puns. <laughs> Oh no, I'm off my axle! Like, all this, I get like every five seconds. Like, okay, I get it. Your robots and your vehicles, I get it. <laughs> um, um, digging Starscream. Love Starscream. I like they. They're giving him a little bit of personality that I. It, it works. You give him just enough. Like, okay, you kind of get what kind of character this is gonna be. And I've 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 heard a lot about Starscream not only from pop culture, but from the Beast Wars series, I, I know who Starscream is. Okay, okay, when the Autobots, okay, the Autobots are in their ship trying to find another energy source to help fight the Decepticons. The Decepticons follow, and they get shot in this meteor storm, but then they board the ship and fight the Autobots. Why are they punching each other? I don't get it. <laughs> I don't understand why they're punching each other. I understand perhaps from a a broadcast standard where they probably are. Just that you can kind of get away with that because they're not humanoid characters like who can bleed and like get broken arms and stuff. No, they're robots, so it's kind of like okay that they they throttle and thrash each other, but it it looks odd. Like why are these? Why? Are they, I mean, in Beast Wars, when they're in the beast form in the giant crystal, it makes sense that they would attack each other with like claws and teeth and stuff because they are beasts at that point. That actually narratively makes sense. No, these are literally metallic robots. Like, why aren't you... We established that there are beams and guns early in the episode, so why aren't they just blasting each other? I don't get that. <laughs> uh, um, love the voiceover guy. I... We will now... Uh... We'll be back to the Transformers after these messages. I, I, li I like that guy. He's a really great voiceover guy. He's awesome. Uh, okay. Four million, four million years. That ship was sitting in the mountain. <laughs> no human being saw it. No one. That never became an archaeological investigation. Nothing. 
all the way up to 1984. That never became a thing. <laughs> you could have put it, like, in the mountains, so at least, okay, they didn't see it. That would, I, I could, it would make sense, like, nobody ever ventured into a volcano. We didn't really have the seismatic technology to look into it. That would make sense. But no, it's literally sticking out the volcano. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, don't spoil it for me. Do not spoil it for me down below if they're going to narratively explain certain things I'm talking about. I'm just saying my gut reaction to what I'm seeing. Why did it take four million years for that little machine to turn on to start activating them again? I don't get that. And why did it only specific? Why, if it's an Autobot chip, did it specifically activate a Decepticon? That doesn't make any sense. You think it would have been programmed to only rejuvenate them, but then again, it's four million years later. It could be all sorts of fucked up. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you idiot, Starscream! I love that part because <laughs> Starscream is an idiot. Um. Oh, no, I, I think I, I'm saying that. It's like, you were in that Starscream. If he hadn't fired the damn the damn shots to, like, bury the ship, he wouldn't have ended up waking up the Autobots. So I, I love Starscream. I love him. I, like, he's so... Well, I, I know he's going to be one of my favorite characters. I just know that. He's, he's not the leader of the good guys. He's not the leader of the bad guys. He's this, he's this bad guy underling who just, he wants more. And then, ooh, that's good enough for me. That's... It's not a lot, but it's good enough... Me, me now, but even as a kid, I would have been invested. Like, okay, I like you. Okay, um, how do they know it's Earth? I mean, I know that. Oh, they're a technological race. Like, and I know they're they're taking cars from Earth. I get that, but how do they know they're on Earth? Because at the end of this episode, they find humans. They for the first time they actually interact with humans. The humans could explain where they are, but how do they know it's Earth? I just I uh, the, the, um. Um, narrative hiccup. There's the hiccup here that doesn't really make any sense. Um, I like the camaraderie among the Autobots. I like how the two of them. I, f I forget who it was. It was that first chase where they're running away from the little the little robots that come out of out of Soundwave, who talks like this. <laughs> I, I that's kind of cool. That's kind of a cool little thing they got going on with him. And one of them gets hurt. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. If I hadn't attacked, if I hadn't attacked the Decepticons, this wouldn't have happened. Huh. No, you mean you attacked and you missed. <laughs> and they, they, they like chuckle. I, I like that little camaraderie they got going on. Like, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of digging why this show probably worked. I, I, I'm, I'm getting it. Um. Oh, feather attack. Um. So after a few things, we meet. We do finally meet the first humans. We see a panther, uh, the robotic panther creature, attack, attack the two humans, and they like run away. They're all freaked out. Then they come to the oil rig. The Decepticons do because they want to capture the energy to, to make it do Energon. And we found, we meet Spike and his dad. It's kind of, it's kind of attack. Kind of Again, why are they fighting hand And then the Autobots come. Why are they fighting hand-to-hand? -hand? I don't get it. <laughs> the universe is mine! The universe will never be yours! Why are you fighting hand-to-hand? -hand? I don't get it. I just don't get it. If, wait, wait, wait. If Starscream wants to wants to rule the Decepticons, when when Megatron becomes a gun, why don't you just snap him in half when he's in your hands? I don't care. Yo, <laughs> just, why don't you just do that? Would that be a way to fit in that quickly? Um, I also find that the announcer is actually kind of sexy. Like, like, at the very end, he, uh, Megatron discovers the rubies of Burma. Like, it, it goes across very sexually. I don't know if that was intentional, but that's what I read. Um... A seven. That's kind of where I put this. That that's my score. Seven. Um. Yeah. Meet me next time for more than meets the eye part two. Take care and bye bye for now, everybody. Oh wait. That is. I want to make sure I got it right. Yep. For more than meets the eye part two. And take care and bye bye for now, everybody.